Chow. Welcome to today's live coffee chat. I'm Sierra Bush. I'm the founder of Creative Edge Travel, and I love helping people connect with um, locals in Italy, experience the far-flung places and those fading traditions and the beautiful areas that you don't always know about because we always hear of Tuscany and um, kind of famous places. So I like to help people get off the beaten path and have a more authentic and unique experience. So today, our coffee chat is about coffee, actually. So we are going through secrets to Italian coffee culture. We're going to have 11 different secrets. Then I'm going to take you through a typical coffee menu from that you would find in Italy. Although, to be honest, they I don't think I've ever seen them have an actual menu. So you definitely want to be here for that to know what your options are. And then we're gonna go through some fun coffee drinks to try while you're in Italy. These are things that you probably haven't heard about, really creative, very local things um, that you would definitely want to know if you wanna try more lo local options. And then we're gonna round it out with a few um, coffee drinks that are particular to certain regions or certain cities in Italy. So let me, if you're here, give me a little comment. Let me know that you're here. I'm I'm trying to set up my comments so I can so I'll be able to see you guys as you write in. Um, so yeah, drop me a comment. Let me know you're here. I've got my coffee today, um, as usual, decaf with oat milk. So good. Okay, so let's dive in. All right, so. I always see tourists that are frustrated to near tears in Italian coffee shops because there's a certain system that's different from what we usually have in the United States. And especially when it's busy, these tourists don't know why they can't get any service. They don't know why um, no one is helping them. They feel frustrated. They don't understand the system. So don't let that be you. That's why you're here today. I'm gonna to take you through it so you'll be ready to navigate coffee like a local once you get in Italy. So not only are these tourists frustrated, but they're actually missing out on what the locals are ordering and being part of this beautiful ritual that has been going on for ages. The best way to feel like a local instead of a tourist is to act like one. So a little bit of preparation will get you a long way and that's why you're here today. So coffee is a historic ritual in Italy. I'm sure that you think of Italy when you think of coffee um, because it is so ingrained in their blood. <laughs> and You've probably heard the joke that Italians run on espresso and that's definitely true. Um, it's not uncommon to see Italians have um, a shot of espresso multiple times a day. Um, the oldest cafe that's still running in, which is in Venice, um, opened in 1720. Um, coffee actually came over to Italy a lot earlier than that. I believe it was in the 1500s, if I'm not mistaken. And um, <clears throat> at first it was actually found in pharmacies as a medicine. So it wasn't widely accessible. When they started opening these cafes, it was exciting. It became a part of the culture and um, you can still see it today. So it wasn't actually until the late 19th century that the invention of this steam driven machine brought Italians their beloved espresso. So that's just a little intro. And now we're gonna dive into 11 secrets to Italian coffee culture. And okay, I'm just, it's always so tough to like navigate. I have like three different screens open trying to make sure I see your comments, but I have my notes and, but please leave me a comment as we go through. If you hear something interesting, let me know what you think. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll definitely be replying in the comments after. So 11 secrets to Italian coffee culture. So the first thing about having coffee in Italy is where to go to have it. Um, what you actually are going to look for is bar. You'll look for a sign that says bar. And I know that sounds strange for an American because for us, bars are usually where you go for alcohol. But in Italy, um, a bar is actually a cafe where you can usually also find alcohol. Hi, Millet. Thanks for coming. Yay, thanks for coming. I'm so glad that you're able to make it. Awesome. So definitely look for the bar and that's where you're going to get your caffeine kick. The next tip is 
near and dear to my heart because I have such a sweet tooth. So I'm always looking for like amazing pastries, right? And when you're on vacation, you're in Italy, why not live it up? Europe is, I mean, when I think of Europe, I definitely, <laughs> my mind definitely goes to those bakeries. So um, I actually, when I want to have breakfast at a cafe, I actually look for a pasticceria. Pasticceria, that is where you find uh, the it's actually the word for bakery. So that's where you'll find a wider assortment of um, more unique, different uh, pastries to choose from. Most regular bars have pastries as well. Um, but if you really want like a high quality assortment, then go to a pasticceria. The next little tip is actually um, an important one because as Americans, we wanna go to a cafe, sit down over a nice long, a uh, session of uh, reading and having your coffee and enjoying. And actually you would think that Italians would be like that too, because what we hear about Italian culture is that they are slow and they live life moment to moment. But when it comes to coffee, it's all about getting it in and getting on with the day. So if you want to have coffee like a local, you'll want to have your coffee standing at the bar instead of sitting down. And you'll actually pay a different price if you sit down. You pay a little bit more to have a table and to sit and take your time. Um, so usually the ritual for an Italian is to go to the same bar they usually go to every morning, have their coffee, chat with the barista, who's probably the same barista that he grew up with, um, and kind of do a little bit of people watching, see who's coming in and out, say hi to your neighbors. And um, it's usually three sips max, and then it's done. So it's a really short, concentrated coffee. So definitely take, if you wanna experience it like a local, stand at the bar. Don't order coffee with milk anytime after breakfast. So this is a strange one I know as Americans and even myself, I mean, obviously I'm American as well. So I have this as well. I love to have a nice long lunch, for example, and then have a little dessert with a cappuccino. It just goes so well together, but sorry to tell you, but you're gonna get some weird looks if you order a cappuccino anytime after breakfast. And if you don't get weird look, it's, looks, it's probably because they're used to tourists ordering cappuccino after, um, after the morning has passed, um, but they inside are definitely thinking, oh, that's disgusting. I've had my Italian friends just have the most um, disgusted reaction when I talk to them about having a cappuccino sometime after breakfast. And what is disgusting about it to them is the digestion aspect. For them, um, digestion is very important. That's why you'll find a, they have digestivo after, well, they have aperitivo, so alcohol before the meal to kind of prep the stomach for digestion. You'll have the wine during the meal, and then you have the digestivo after the meal, which is like a, a shot of, say, grappa that helps everything <laughs> digest and settle it well in your stomach. Um, so when it comes to the thought of having a big lunch and ending it with a warm cup of milk, to them it just feels like so heavy and not good for digestion. So the funny thing is I always like to point out to my Italian friends like, okay, I can't have my cappuccino after lunch, but you can have a gelato after lunch and that's perfectly fine. Both are made of milk, so <laughs> not sure where the problem is, but um, yeah, these are just interesting little cultural quirks and we all grow up hearing that one way is normal and one way is not and it's just culture and it's so I think it's so important to take the time to like understand what's behind that 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 initial reaction and to open ourselves up and try to catch ourselves having an initial reaction which if you were here last week our coffee chat last week was about um Italian dishes that might make you squeamish. That's a really fun one. So check that one out. It's a good way to test your initial reaction to certain foods that might not sound super appetizing to Americans. So moving on here, um, Italians don't normally do coffee to go. So I know in the US, we love to have our big cup of coffee to walk around with it in the morning. Um, but in Italy, that's not really a thing. 
I have started to see some really small to-go cups that are literally just the size for an espresso. And usually that's just if you're like bringing coffee to a gathering of people or something like that. It's not really just because you wanna be able to walk around and enjoy it because it's so tiny anyway. That's just not part of the deal, right? So no coffee to go. Um, a really cool tradition that is coming back now, it had been disappearing, uh, but in the past five or so years, there's been this movement to, um, to restart it and to keep it alive. It's a really beautiful tradition. I'm excited, excited to share it with you today um, after a sip of coffee. <laughs> so it's called Café Sospezzo, Café Sospezzo. It means suspended coffee, and it's an anonymous act of generosity where you will buy two coffees, but you only get one. So basically, you're forwarding a coffee on to the next stranger that comes in asking, is there a cafe suspezzo available? Um, so usually, this started in Naples, and it was for like uh, the the poorer people that couldn't really afford a coffee every day, they would be able to come in and say like, hey, is there any cafe sospezzo? And um, you could, they would be able to get a coffee for free. So when you're in Italy, that's a great, uh, that will be a great fun thing to try, especially if you're in Naples to order a cafe sospezzo, you'll get your one cafe and you'll have one forwarded onto a stranger. So we're on tip number seven here, and it is that um, Italian coffee, when you go to a bar and you order your coffee, it's going to be served with a glass of water, a small glass of water, and it's either going to be um, flat water or sparkling water. Uh, they don't usually ask, they're busy, you know, they usually just give you frizzante, if I remember, which is sparkling. And um, you can ask, sometimes they don't give you a glass, but you can always ask for one. Um, the one thing I don't like about this little um, thing that they do in Italy uh, is that it's usually served in a plastic, little plastic cup that they throw away. And I cannot imagine how many of those get thrown away every single day with as much coffee as Italians to drink. So you might consider um, asking for it in glass. So you could say, um, potrei avere un bicchiere d'acqua in vetro. So you're asking for a glass of water in glass. Uh, well, literally a glass of water instead of a plastic cup. Um, so now's, now's the time for the tip that causes so much confusion that I talked about at the beginning. Um, in most places, you actually have to pay for your drink first and then give the barista your receipt so they can see what you ordered. In some smaller towns, they don't do this, but even in smaller towns, there are certain like main hub bars that are in the center of the town that do get busy at certain hours. And then you would still see this uh, system for ordering coffee, um, especially in Rome, especially in the bigger cities, you'll find this, uh, this system in place. And it causes a lot of confusion because as a visitor, you naturally think like, okay, I don't know what I want. I need to look and see. And then, you know, someone is there waiting for you to tell them what you want. So you tell them and, but you're not giving them a receipt. So they're saying something to you in Italian that you don't understand. And they're pointing to go over there and you don't like, it's just very confusing. A lot of people around rushing in and out. So just remember in most places, there will be a um, register where you pay for your coffee, they'll give you a receipt and then you go to the barista and you give them the receipt and they'll either read what you want or they ask what you want. Usually they can see the amount and they know what you ordered based on that. Um, so it can get confusing, but it's an effective way to make sure that everybody pays for their order. And the only thing I don't like about this system is I like to be able to see what my options are. And especially when it comes back to those pastries, there are a lot of different options and I don't necessarily know what they're each called. And so it's difficult to tell a person at the register what I actually want to order, right? Um, but I think usually they have kind of a system for more kind of like small pastry, medium pastry or large pastry kind of thing. So, um, you just kind of have to feel out what's what is the system there. Okay, tip number nine. Um, 
when you run into someone on the street or have any type of meeting, coffee is almost always offered or the meeting will actually take place at a bar. So that's just like a little bit of Italian coffee culture is coffee is at the center of every every uh, connection you make, right? You're always getting together to um, have a coffee. For example, if somebody called and say, hey, how was your vacation? It's good to hear from you. I wanna hear all about it. Instead of telling you how your vacation was on the phone, they'll actually say like, oh, prendiamo un caffè. Let's get a coffee and talk about it over coffee. And we have a, uh, the last little tip here, which is that espresso is often had after dinner as well. So I don't know about you, I'm very caffeine sensitive, thus the uh, decaf coffee I have today. I can't imagine how they can have espresso after dinner, but they do. Usually the waiter will ask like cafe, digestivo. So they're asking like, do you want a coffee or do you want a um, digestivo? And some people will have, say, a limoncello to end the meal, and others will have a um, cafe. Okay, so moving on to the next little section here. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Give, giving, give me a thumbs up if you learned something in that past little, in those little tips. Um, I hope that was helpful. And now we're going to talk about just the basic Italian coffee menu. What are your options? Um, what are the words? And a lot of them are going to be familiar to you and some will not. Okay, so. So the, the first thing would be a un cafe. That's the most basic thing. Cafe. Vorrei un cafe, per favore. I'd like a coffee, please. But it's so casual, you can just walk up to the, to the bar and say un cafe. <laughs> or like if you're like me, un cafe decaffeinato. So that's decaf, decaffeinato. Um, so cafe is actually a single shot of espresso. A doppio would be a double shot of espresso. Doppio actually means double. So doppio. Ristretto. Ristretto is like restricted or short. So it's a concentrated cup of espresso made with half the usual amount of water. So super concentrated. Ristretto. A lungo is a long cup of cup, cup of espresso made with slightly more water than what you'd have with a typical shot of espresso. And americano is what you typically think of as coffee if you're American. So americano is a diluted shot of espresso meant to imitate American drip coffee. And then we've got a macchiato, which you've probably heard, you're probably familiar with that at Starbucks, macchiato, macchiato, same thing. Um, <laughs> but you've got to say it with the hands, right? Macchiato. Um, so that's actually, the word macchiato is Italian for stained or marked. Macchiato, marked, that's how I connect it in my brain. And um, this coffee is actually, this is actually espresso that is, dropped with a steam of milk. So you just barely mark it with a little bit of steamed milk, macchiato. And then cappuccino, you know already for sure, it's a shot of espresso with steamed milk. And then the last one is corretto, corretto. So the corretto, the word means corrected. So the idea is that you're correcting the balance of um, something that slows you down and something that speeds you up. So it's a shot of espresso, which speeds you up with a small amount of with a small amount of liqueur, like grappa or sambuca, which slows you down. So that's a corretto, which I've never tried. I need to try that, but with my sensitivity to caffeine, I'm, maybe it would work out. I don't I don't trust that it really corrects. <laughs> but um, yeah, so quick review: there's the cafe, doppio, ristretto, lungo, americano macchiato, cappuccino, and corretto. So I wanna know, tell me in the comments, which one would you order right now if you could be in Italy ordering a coffee? I would probably go for a, an espresso de caffeinato, a decaf espresso.
So now I'm really excited for this part. You guys, I really love discovering dishes that I don't know about or drinks that I don't know about. You just know when you travel somewhere, even in the United States sometimes, even at home, you just, I always, I'll speak for myself. I always have a sense that I'm missing out on something, that there's some kind of local thing I should be trying or um, something that's not on the menu, but the locals know about it. And so that's why I'm excited about this, this section. We're going to talk about some lesser known drinks that are outside of the, the standard menu um, that you wouldn't know about unless you're watching this right now. So I see, oh, my Kara has a great suggestion. I see these comments coming in on what you would order. So we've got Kathy's going to have a cappuccino de caffeinato. Great choice. Kara, I love your suggestion, the gelato with coffee. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I didn't even really cover that. But really, really, really delicious thing to order is affogato. Affogato is coffee, so a shot of espresso with gelato in it. It's so good, so good. So that's a great choice. And then Milet is going to have a cappuccino with a cornetto. Yep, that's the basic staple breakfast. You're right. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So a few coffee drinks that you might not know about. The first one is Espressino, which is also called a Marocchino in other parts of Italy. Espressino is more in the south. Um, Marocchino actually means Moroccan. So it's a tiny cappuccino. You can, you can think of it as a tiny concentrated cappuccino with a dusting of cocoa on top and always served in a glass so that you can see the layers of how the milk separates from the coffee. And there are various versions. Sometimes it comes with Nutella smeared on the inside of the glass and then they put in the milk and the coffee. So that's a fun one. The next one is Espressino Freddo. Espressino freddo. So freddo actually means cold. Um, so it's like the one before, espressino freddo, espressino cold, cold espressino, which is actually another word for it is a, another way of saying it is crema di caffè, which is a little bit more accurate, I think. So crema di caffè, you might be able to tell that means like creamed coffee or cream of coffee. It's made by creaming sugar ice and espresso until cold and frothy and then it's stirred into panna and panna is whipped cream it it ends up almost like a soft serve coffee flavored ice cream like a coffee soft serve but there's something different about it, it the texture is even more like pillowy and soft and melty it's like slightly melt you know when you have a container of ice cream and you you just get the edges that have melted it's like just that good melted part um, so this one you can also take to the next level, which I highly recommend by having your barista coat the inside of your glass with your choice of chocolate, Nutella, or caramel. But in Puglia, the southern part of Italy, in the heel of the boot, the local favorite is Borghetti. So they'll coat it with Borghetti, which is actually a coffee liqueur. The next one is Cafe Al Ginseng or just ginseng, which is, as you can guess, ginseng. <laughs> it's actually a healthier boost um, of energy because of ginseng's ability to calm the, the central nervous system and stimulate mental activity. It takes on a rich nutty flavor that's pretty good actually. And the only thing is they put a lot of sugar in it. Um, it just usually comes that way. And I usually end up asking for it senza zucchero, without sugar, and then I add my own little bit so that I can control how much sugar I'm having, because Lord knows I'm having two gelatos later on anyway. <laughs> Got to balance it out. Okay, so Cafe Al Ginseng, if you can't, um, Kathy, like you, if you're doing the de decaf as I do, it, and you, you're getting tired of just like decaf espresso or decaf cappuccino, you can try a cafe al ginseng. Um, actually, sorry, you can try ginseng. If you order cafe al ginseng, then that's the coffee with the ginseng too. So I always have to clarify. I find that in, I believe it's in Southern Italy, when I order a ginseng, it comes just ginseng without the caffeine, without the coffee. But 
in Northern Italy, if I order a ginseng, then it automatically comes with coffee in it. So I always have to specify ginseng, senza cafe, senza caffeina. Um, the next one is similar, it's called Cafe Dorso, and it's actually no caffeine, another alternative to coffee. And it's actually really nice that Italy has these, these um, options as well, um, so that you, you have some different things to try if you're not a caffeine drinker. So Cafe Dorso, Cafe Dorso is uh, made from barley. So it has a nutty flavor um, and, you know, even people that do have caffeine, sometimes they'll order a, a cafe dorso because they've maybe they're in a meeting, but they had their, their morning shot of espresso two hours ago and they don't wanna have too much. So they might order something that doesn't have caffeine just to slow things down a bit. <laughs> um, okay, and then the next one is really fun. This is great for summer if you're craving something cool and uh, need something refreshing, but you also need the caffeine, you can order a cafe shakerato, cafe shakerato, and it means shaken, shakerato, shaken. So it's espresso and sugar, usually like a simple syrup, that are shaken um, for a long time in a cocktail shaker until it gets really frothy and it's served in a martini glass. So I was so amazed the first time I had this that it didn't have any cream in it because they shake it so much with the ice that it really does get frothy and seems really creamy. It's, it becomes this like special fun drink because it's in a martini glass. Um, so definitely try Cafe Chacarato. And then the last one is Granita di Cafe. So if you've been to Sicily, you know what Granita is. It's the shaved ice um, treats that they serve. Um, you can find a lot of different uh, fruit flavors. You can even find nut flavors, which is really unique. And it's what's special about Granita is it's not just like shaved ice um, because they don't put any water in it. Um, obviously the cafe one's probably a bit different because you have to use water to make the coffee. But usually, let's say you have a strawberry granita, it's made with just the juice of the strawberry. They don't add water to it. So every bite is just full of flavor. And in Italy, they always choose the best ingredients. So it's just incredible. It's really good. Um, so granita di caffè is gonna be a coffee flavored granita. So if you want uh, an ice flavored coffee, I mean, a uh, coffee flavored icy, treat in the afternoon or also locals will have granita in the morning um, and they eat it with a brioche and that's considered perfectly normal if there's a brioche also with gelato i've heard that locals will have um, gelato for breakfast in a brioche um, so that's interesting okay so i'm going to run through these I, I do a quick review tell me in the comments which one you would order right now um, the first one is Espressino, which is a tiny cappuccino with the cocoa on top. Espressino Freddo, which is, which is that uh, like coffee soft serve ice cream kind of thing. There's Cafe Al Ginseng, which is uh, the coffee with ginseng or just the regular ginseng without the coffee. There's Cafe Dorzo, which is made from barley. And there's the Cafe Chacarato and the Granita di Cafe. So tell me in the comments, which one would you order right now? Milet says, shaken coffee sounds lovely. Thank you for all these new coffee treats to look forward to for the next trip. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love, I mean, this is, this is what I'm here for is helping you guys get an inside step into the culture so that when you land in Italy, you can step into Italy as if you're a local and that just opens you up to so many more meaningful experiences. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going here. Drop me your comments. I know there's like always a little lag between the Facebook Live, so it takes a minute for your comments to show up. But um, so now to round out this this uh, episode and this session, this coffee chat. I'm going to talk about some regional coffee drinks that you can have in certain areas of Italy or certain cities. In Puglia, you have to try Cafe Leccese. Lecce is a bigger city in the very bottom of the heel of Italy. 
and it's a beautiful city known for its Baroque architecture. And they also are known for Cafe Le Cese. So in Puglia, a really, po a really um, popular product that they produce there is latte di mandorla, which latte means milk and uh, mandorla means almonds. So it's actually latte di mandorla. We would say almond milk, but what it actually is is more an almond syrup. Um, and it has such a strong flavor of almond. Um, it's not like the artificial almond flavor that we have here. It's really fresh, it's really rich. And this Cafe Le Cese is, um, they'll take a short glass, they put some ice cubes in it, they put the shot of espresso and they serve it with um, either they, they let either they already put it in in front of you or they let you pour it in but you add the latte di mandorla and it you you can see it like blend you know with the beautiful white of the latte with the dark brown of the coffee and it's um really refreshing and sweet Mm, okay, I'm seeing. Kara says, I'd like the melted ice creamy one with caramel. Good choice. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so the next regional coffee drink is from Trentino in Northern Italy, and it's the Cappuccino Viennese. So Viennese, you might guess it means from Vienna. And Cappuccino Viennese is a frothy coffee with chocolate and cinnamon. Then in Naples, you have um, a coffee with hazelnut cream, which sounds really good. I, I have passed through Naples. I have yet to spend a lot of time there, but I'm definitely overdue for a pizza and this coffee with hazelnut cream. Um, in Sicily, you can have Cafe du Parinou. Excuse my, I, don't, I probably butchered that pronunciation because it's dialect and I find Sicilian dialect particularly difficult. Um, it has a lot of uh, Arabic words that have stuck around since the time that the Arabs were in control of the area. And, and um, in a similar <laughs> way, this Cafe du Parinou is actually an Arabic inspired coffee with cloves, cinnamon, and cocoa. In Padua, you have uh, Patavina, Patavina combines espresso with cream, then finished with a dash of mint syrup and a dusting of cocoa. So if you like mint chocolate ice cream, I'm guessing you would really like this. Sounds really unique. I would definitely try it. Um, so this last one is really cool. I'm really excited to share this one with you. I actually um, haven't been to this region yet. It's the it's called Valle de Valle de Augusta. So in the United States, I'm from Georgia. I grew. I spent the first seven years of my life in Valdosta. So this word is like sim very similar. Valdosta, Valle de Augusta. It's the top northwest part of Italy, and um, this drink is called a Cafe alla Valdostana. It's a symbol of brotherhood and friendship, and I'll explain why. Um, sorry, reading this comment from Dalan, who has family and roots from Naples. He says, marvelous episode on coffee, which as with food is very regionally distinct. However, for me, the best, best, best coffee is in Napoli. Definitely need to check that out. Yes, for sure. And he's correcting my pronunciation too, Valda, Valdosta. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. There was an extra, I was throwing an extra A in there. Valle Dosta, maybe, <laughs> Valle Dosta. You always have to be willing to just give it a try and be ready to be corrected. That's the only way to improve your Italian. So thank you, Dalan. Okay, so this drink is Cafe alla Valdostana. And it's a symbol of brotherhood and friendship. It's served in a wooden cup with a lid and different spouts to drink from. And this, um, what do you call it? Uh, vessel, I don't know if that's the right word. This vessel is called a grola. And the tradition of this grola cup 
has been passed down from generation to generation and it has to be made by local artisans. Um, it's made on a wooden lathe, a wood lathe. And the tradition says that it has to be passed directly from hand to hand when you're sharing it with friends. So you put the coffee inside and it has maybe four spouts on it and you drink from one, you pass it, they drink it and it never sits down because the idea is to, um, to share it, to be in community with people and um, for it to be in movement, not static in the middle of the table. Um, so the coffee that they put in it is prepared um, by putting the coffee inside the cup, they add the sugar and they stir it until it's dissolved. And then on the side, they mix some different liqueurs. Um, the liqueurs are grappa, juniper liqueur and cognac. Um, and then they add those to the coffee. And then after you add the liqueurs to the coffee, you add pieces of lemon or orange peel, and finally some cinnamon and cloves. And then to finish it off, you flambe the coffee until the alcohol has evaporated, then you can start to share the drink. So I found that really interesting. I actually hadn't heard of that before. I was doing a little bit of preparation and discovered that really unique coffee. Definitely wanna go there and try that. Um, I mean, give me a comment if that's something that sounds really awesome to you is to go to Valdosta and share this coffee in this uh, Grola cup with some locals. That sounds like a perfect day. <clears throat> so I hope that this, um, I keep wanting to call these episodes, but I hope that <laughs> this coffee chat has inspired you to do a little research before you travel to Italy. Um, so that you can order like a local and you know what's the point why do you want to order like a local we travel to experience a new culture right a new way of life a new routine a new way of living so if you're carrying some habits from home over to Italy and you're stuck on certain things certain comforts being exactly the same as you have them at home your experience is going to be a lot less meaningful than if you're opening up to the local culture and letting the locals around you lead the way so every trip has a trail of beautiful surprises just hidden along the way, and it's up to you to take the time to find them. Um, otherwise, you can also work with someone like me that's an Italy expert that can kind of give you a heads up about these things so that you don't miss out. Um, so anyway, I hope this was a great episode for you guys. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, if you have any questions or just I'd love to read your thoughts in the comments. If you have ideas for other coffee chats we can do in the future, we do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So mark your calendars and tune back in. And if you like my, my background, we actually have 10 free Zoom backgrounds. Um, the link is in the description. So you can click that link and it'll lead you to a link where you can download the full quality versions. And it's super simple to upload them to Zoom. So if you want to spice up your Zoom meetings, I'm sure you're all feeling zoomed out and this is a great way to um, spice up your Zoom routine and it helps with daydreaming too. <laughs> if you're in big meetings with lots of people that you don't feel like you should be on, you can just kind of imagine yourself in that setting. And these, this, the cool thing about these Zoom backgrounds is they are all, <clears throat> they're all of lesser known places in Italy. So they're all these far flung, unique, beautiful places. Um, so definitely head to that link and download those. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming. I had a lot of fun sharing um, the secrets to Italian coffee culture. If you have a secret that I didn't cover, please leave it in the comment. I, I'm always game to learn more. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Ciao.